Right, it's just occurred to me I'm approaching this the wrong way, or potentially the wrong way. What I ought to do is put a fully charged battery in there tonight. It's about quarter to eight at night. And see if it's still running in the morning. So then we know whether the clock will actually run all night on one of these batteries. And then whether it gets enough sunlight during the day to restore the battery enough to run the next night. If that makes any sense. So I've just charged this battery up separately. So as you can now see, that is now running off that battery. Nothing to do with solar power because the sun isn't shining. So 8 o'clock tonight. We'll have a look tomorrow morning when it gets light and see if it's still running. I have got the time-lapse camera running again. Because I doubt whether I'll be up as soon as the sun comes up. So we'll be able to see, as soon as it's light enough for the camera to actually see what's going on, we'll know if the clock is still running. If that makes any sense. So we'll check it out tomorrow. And we'll leave the time lapse running, see if it charges enough during the day to keep it running tomorrow night. And then, of course, as I keep saying, I really ought to put a resistor in the circuit to reduce, reduce the current draw from the clock. But we'll, we'll see how it gets on. I would think in the summer, when the nights are shorter, it'd have a better chance of running all the way through the night. Good morning guys. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, which is early for me. I thought I'd come down and have a look. And the bad news is, it didn't make it through the night on that battery. So, we're going to have to think again. There's not enough power in one of those batteries fully charged to get that through the night. Or at least not while we've got long nights. I put that battery on at about midnight. So it's not run for eight hours. So that's a shame. I could try putting a resistor on the clock wires reduce the current draw that's probably the best thing probably if I get a variable resistor a potentiometer and adjust it so it does just run and see if that helps right we've established that battery doesn't keep that clock running all through the night. We'll try adding a resistor in circuit, see if we can reduce the current draw. And then if that doesn't work, we'll have to look at either doubling or trebling the number of batteries, see if we can build up enough capacity to keep the clock running. Because at the moment it's running off the solar, I should think. Hmm. Interesting. It's obviously put some current into the battery, and that is keeping a uh, current, some charge into the battery, and that is running the clock. I thought that was just going to be off the 
solar panel. Okay. Anyway, we will look at what we can do. I think I'll add a resistor in. I might take this apart so we can solder the leads onto the circuit board direct rather than just have them poked in there onto the contacts. fall apart. Okay. Well, my idea of trying to solder onto the circuit board isn't going to work. Circuit board is under there, but looking from here, it looks like it's all push fit with no solder. Mm. I really don't want to take that apart. Bound to fail trying to get it back together, aren't we? No, I think we'll leave that. I mean, I've got a fairly good contact either end. I thought they were loose, but they're not. They're, they're gripped on okay. So, no, we won't take it apart. still working okay so we'll leave that as it is got me bits of blue tack back on it to hold it in place resistor in there. I think I've got some potentiometers in here, variable resistors. Oh, one from the looks of it. I've got a box full of them somewhere. One zero three. Uh, so that 10k then, isn't it? Can't really test this at the moment unless I put another fully charged battery in there. Because we're getting yeah, solar power there at the moment. Yeah. Right, that one's got 1.33 on it. So it's got a little bit more charge in it.
Don't be fitting in. All right. And let's cover that over for a minute. Increase the resistance. Don't need very much. Mm. We must be pretty borderline there. I think we're going to have to use two batteries. Just out of interest, if we measure the input, I'm getting 3.1 volts across the battery contacts. Obviously the battery's not there. If I go across the wires coming directly from the solar panel, getting 3.4, so we're losing about 0.3 of a volt through the circuitry. Now, I was working on the <laughs> assumption, always a bad thing, that this had some sort of regulation in it to reduce the Uh, current go into the battery, stop it overcharging, but I may be just, um, <laughs> I can't think of a polite word to say there, I may be wrong, because it's, its real purpose is just to switch the LED on when there's no current coming from the solar panel, so maybe it doesn't do any anything useful and I could just remove it and put the solar panel straight across the battery to charge it. That would certainly charge at a faster rate. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here, is my latest video on my channel and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.